What the hell is happening with gold? That's the question of the day. We're going to dive into what is going on with gold, silver, the precious metals market, uh, because there are some uh, insane things happening right now. And uh, uh, even with uh, gold miners. And so we're going to dive into all of that, what's been going on over the last week. And uh, I give you some uh, some guidance on how to proceed with this market. Uh, is, uh, is gold safe? Is silver safe? Are gold stocks safe? Uh, where are the dangers? What should you stay away from? And what are the nuances in between? Let's dive in. Okay, so if you follow the precious metals market at all, you've seen a couple crazy things happening recently. Number one, you've seen a steep sell-off in the price of gold, the spot price of gold. Number two, you've seen a massive sell-off in the spot price of silver. Number three, which is interesting because of the first two points, you've seen a massive increase in the premiums that dealers are charging to actually buy physical gold and silver. And you've seen a lot of the supply being completely sold out. If you call an average gold dealer right now, uh, they're probably sold out of all of their coins. They're probably sold out of the American Eagles, gold and silver. They're probably sold out of the gold Maple Leafs. They're probably sold out of the Buffaloes, all coins. And uh, with silver, a lot of the dealers are sold out of all silver products until you get to like a thousand ounce bars, which at the current price is over $12,000 just for uh, just for one silver bar because it's, you know, a thousand ounces, $12 per ounce right now. Uh, and then whatever premium they're charging on top of that. The American uh, Mint, the U.S. government, the Mint is actually uh, sold out of, uh, of American Eagles right now. And uh, so we're seeing a huge divergence between what it costs to actually get physical gold and silver into your pocket. Sometimes premiums are 10 to 30%. I've even seen like 54% uh, premiums off of the spot price of gold to actually acquire uh, physical gold and silver. And the, so there you have this huge skyrocketing price in physical gold and silver, but the spot price of gold is going down the spot price of silver is plummeting. And so people who are new to the market are calling these gold, deer, these gold dealers and thinking that they're getting ripped off. They're thinking that these gold dealers are just you know price gouging. That's not what's happening. There is a huge supply issue right now that they can't even get it. Most dealers now have even upped the minimum on just any orders because they can't handle the amount of orders coming in. So they're saying, hey, if you're not buying at least $5,000 or $10,000 or $20,000 worth of precious metals, we can't take your order because we have so many orders coming in right now that we can't even handle it. And again, at the same time, the actual spot price of gold and silver is plummeting. So we have a couple things going on here. And the first word, it's the M word that nobody likes is manipulation. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of blaming manipulation for things. I know manipulation happens uh, from time to time across industries. Um, ultimately, though, manipulation doesn't work long term. Ultimately, the free markets uh, will snap back and there will be a backlash against uh, that manipulation. So we have dealers and bullion banks right now that we know as of uh, recent reports have record short positions in precious metals. And so if uh, if the price of precious metals starts to go up too high, we know that uh, they will, you know, basically start to go under. They don't have, uh, they're, they're too short and there's not enough physical supply right now to back up their shorts. And so if the price starts to go up, then uh, their deliveries aren't enough to match the uh, paper shorts that they have. And so they go under. And so what we're seeing is a, you know, every time, you know, the price of gold was hitting $1,700 per ounce. And um, every time it started to rally a little bit, we'd see, you know, a massive spike in, um, in uh, paper shorts hitting the market. And that was, you know, pushing the price back down. And the idea is that what they're doing then is a lot using that lower price to buy up the physical supply. So that's one reason why we have a short on physical supply right now, because the bullion banks are trying to get in front of this, flip their positions around. And uh, one evidence, one piece of evidence that we see that backs that up is that open interest on contracts has been going down. It has been shrinking, which just means that uh, this, uh, if it is manipulation and if this is really what's happening, which is it's pretty hard to prove, but there's a lot of pretty good speculation out there that this is happening, at least at a small scale, um, that uh, eventually once they flip their position around and they're net long instead of net short, they don't want that price of gold to go down anymore. So they're going to stop dumping all these naked shorts onto the market to suppress the, the paper price. 
Now, the other thing that's happening specifically with silver, not so much with gold, but with silver, silver is primarily an industrial metal. And I've said this for months. And every time I've talked about gold and silver on my, on my videos, I've always said this, that gold is a safer bet than sil silver. There's a higher risk to reward ratio with silver, but higher risk to reward ratio always means that there's also it's, there is a higher risk, and we've seen that recently because silver has plummeted. Because silver is primarily today an industrial metal. It's used in you know medical uh, equipment, and um, it's used in electronics a lot. And so um, as uh, as the price of commodities in this global crunch and this global slowdown has has hit, um, that uh, that hampers the uh, one of the main demand sources for silver. And uh, one of the reasons why it doesn't have the same monetary um, attractiveness as gold has is because it's, uh, you know, it's such a lower value per ounce. And uh, historically, when you, you know, when you were paying with gold and silver, you'd use silver as change for the gold because it was, you know, a smaller denomination. And uh, similar to how today, you know, you use coins as as uh, a change for cash. But as debit cards have come around, you start stop using. Uh, coins and cash as much because you know electronic uh, transactions you're able to divide up those uh, transactions into any uh, small amount same thing with gold and silver you're able to buy gold and silver and sell it in uh, fractional amounts and so the uh, monetary usefulness that silver always had as being a smaller denomination uh, so that you could pay in smaller amounts as opposed to you know the ounces of gold um, it's it's not as useful anymore because electronic transactions allow you to do smaller denominations and fractional amounts of gold very easily today and so that's why I've always said that if you want the safest bet, physical gold is the safest bet. If you want a higher risk to reward ratio, yeah, silver is going to be it. And I do think we're going to have a big rally in silver, but who knows? We might not, or it might take a very long time. Now, the last thing that I want to mention about this uh, divergence between the, the paper price and the physical price of gold and silver is that um, that's why I've always said that if you don't have it, you don't have it. If you don't have the physical gold or silver in your possession, then you have counterparty risk. I don't care if you store it in a allocated, segregated, insured vault in another country. Uh, I don't care if you have it in your safety deposit box, which is actually one of the worst ideas because it can be confiscated and you know, that, but the time that you need it, you won't be able to get it. Uh, that's another story. If you don't have it in your hand, uh, you, there's counterparty risk. And even if you do have it in your hand and somebody else knows that you have it, then there's some counterparty risk there too because they might wanna come and uh, try and take it from you. But ultimately these paper, these paper exposures to the price of gold and silver, um, there have been a lot of people speculating that at some point would uh, would diverge and uh, they may not reconverge. The paper markets for physical precious metals might collapse. Now, personally, I don't think that's going to happen, but we know that there's a massive amount of gold in unallocated accounts, meaning that they operate off of the fractional reserve system. They don't have enough gold to back up all the claims on the gold in those unallocated accounts. They're not allocated specifically to any person. And uh, each unallocated account just re represents a claim on, you know, uh, the, basically the bullion bank owns owe, owes you gold. Um, you don't own any specific gold, you know, underneath your name. Um, something like GLD is a little bit better than an unallocated account because GLD itself has fully allocated gold that's not loaned or uh, or leased out. And uh, but they do have HSBC is their custodian uh, for this. And HSBC has been having some big problems lately. And so the counterparty risk is what if HSBC, you know, the audits aren't you know real or correct or, you know, there's some uh, deceit going on. There's always counterparty risk if you don't own the physical gold yourself. Now, one other thing that I'd like to mention is that I've been really, um, you know, basically uh, advocating for gold stocks right now, not advice, just education. It looks like one of the best buying opportunities of any stocks that I've I've seen in a very, very long time uh, that mining stocks are the most undervalued stock that you can buy right now. It's it's unbelievable. And uh, the GDX is a good um, you know indicator of the, uh, it's, it's an index that tracks gold mining stocks. Um, I don't really particularly like the GDX myself just because I don't like index funds. Um, I like active funds because you actually have a real person who can think and analyze financial statements and uh, analyze, hey, are these, you know, are these ex 
exploration companies? Are these, do they have a proven deposit? What is their, you know, do they have a lot of cash to sit on? Are they funded purely on debt? And so if I, if I'm in a fund, I like active more than index, um, especially in uh, times of turmoil. And so, um, but you can look at the GDX as a good idea of what mining stocks have been doing. And a couple days ago, uh, they just got absolutely crushed. And I think this was last Friday. Now, one of the reasons they got absolutely crushed is because of triple leveraged funds. And my prediction is we're going to start seeing the same thing play out in other places like in uh, equity index funds and in treasury or uh, just regular bond index funds. But it happens specifically with uh, with miners. If you're familiar with JNUG, J-U-N, I'm sorry, J-N-U-G, that is a triple leveraged um, uh, mining gold mining stock. Now, the way that triple leveraged uh, mining stocks work is they uh, they own the index, but they use debt to uh, own own a lot more of it, and so they have a a leverage factor to them. And so every day that the uh, underlying index moves, they'll try and move you know three times whatever that move is, up or down. The problem with this is beta slippage. If you don't know what the term beta slippage is, that just means that over time uh, the uh, the triple leverage fund does worse and worse and worse. That's, that's all you really need to know. But the explanation of why is because let's say you start at 100 and I take away 10% from you. Now you're at 90 because 100 minus 10% is 10 is 90. Now, if I give you, you know, go, let's go up 10% now from 90. Where are you at? You're not back at 100. You're at 99 because 10% of 90 is only nine. And so if you go down 10% and then up 10%, you're still down 1% from where you started. And so if I am a leveraged fund tracking your movement and you're just going sideways, basically you're going up and down, but you're going sideways, I'm losing. Because every single move that you make, I'm, I'm losing more than you are. And every time that persists, I would need a larger move up than before, an exponentially larger move up than before to even make up what I lost. And the longer that persists, the worse it gets. So look at every, every single triple leverage fund you can find, any single, anyone you can find, look at a long-term chart of it. it it's a, just a steep drop off from the top left to the bottom right, every single time. You see this again with, you know, so you see this with JNUG. So what starts to happen when, uh, when people start to sell because the net asset value of this fund is just starting to implode because mining stocks might have been moving sideways or going down a little bit. Well, you start to see that people will sell this triple leveraged fund. But when people sell the triple leveraged fund, the triple leveraged fund still has to, uh, you know, match up their internal investments to their uh, to their share price, to the money that's going in and out of their fund. And so that forces them to sell the underlying mining stocks that they have at a triple leverage. And so what we saw was kind of a uh, cascading effect where people were selling JNUG, that was forcing JNUG to sell the mining stocks, that was pushing selling pressure down on the mining stocks, that pushed the net asset value of JNUG down, which caused more and more uh, it just a, a re self reinforcing feedback loop that just cratered mining stocks very quickly. Now, since then they've come back. The GDX um, right now is, uh, you know, at, uh, at 21, it bottomed out almost close to 16 when this happened. Um, and so um, uh, we're, uh, you know, we're, we're well, well away from the top of where we were just, you know, last month and uh, for the few previous months prior to that. But ultimately, uh, with where the price of gold is, if you find a mining stock that is, you know, they're cash heavy, because uh, you don't want something that's reliant on debt right now. Uh, you don't with credit potentially drying up even with everything the Federal Reserve is doing. Uh, somebody that's cash heavy, somebody that some miners that have, uh, you know, large proven deposits, uh, they prob they're probably some of the best sales that you can find right now. Um, in uh, the entire stock market. Ultimately, that's what's going on. I don't see manipulation as the primary factor in what's going on. We have a liquidity crisis right now. And that's why the Federal Reserve, in my last video, I talked about everything the Federal Reserve is doing this week. That's why they're rolling out all the stops. That's why they're opening up all the financial crisis era programs in order to provide dollars into the market wherever it can, as fast as it can, because there's a liquidity crisis right now everybody's levered up. And so when everything starts to crash, when you're levered up, you need to produce cash as quickly as possible. So the things in a panic, you don't sell what you want, you sell what you can. And so even things like gold, 
uh, that this is the perfect environment for things like gold and silver and especially mining stocks. Uh, they get sold because they've maintained their value a lot better than the you know, S&P 500 and the Dow. And so they're gonna get sold off to produce the cash that is needed for some of the margin calls and uh, things like that. And so paper sales are gonna be a big part of that. That's gonna push down on the paper, the spot price of gold and silver as well. So uh, that's what's going on. Uh, ultimately, counterparty risk eliminated as much as possible. Um, I don't think we're at the end of the uh, volatility here. I don't think we're at the bottom of the market and uh, we've got uh, you know a, a lot of crazy things happening right now. They've uh, this week rolled out the emergency uh, programs and uh, so yet to be seen. Once the liquidity issue is solved, then uh, uh, then there's uh, no more, uh, when there's no more need to uh, um, grab for dollars as absolutely quickly as possible by all of these, you know, from all these levered up firms just having margin calls and everything getting cratered on them, then uh, the next step is going to be, hey, we're seeing a massive expansion in the money supply and uh, that will uh, send gold and hopefully silver as well through the moon. Thank you for watching. Hope that helps. Let me know if you had any questions about anything that I said that uh, might not have been clear in the comments below. I really appreciate you guys. Have a great day.